Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 91. This week, I'm gonna be talking about how I accomplished one of the most difficult high-speed photography shots I've ever done. So in the past, I've done water droplet photography with the camera axe, not too bad. Now with the auto mode, I can get great shots like that in a few minutes. I've also done projectiles like this, and uh, you know, photographing a shooting bullet, normally very difficult, but with the right sensors on the camera axe, again, not that hard to accomplish. But what if I were to combine them and I had a water spout coming up, the droplet coming down to collide with that to make that nice crown, and then a bullet piercing the water spout. Now that would be crazy. And I've actually seen this online and I'm like, nobody ever talks about how they've done it. And I started thinking about it and there's actually, you know, some tricks to accomplishing this. And I thought this week I'd talk about how you can actually accomplish this with the camera axe. We'll start with a description of the setup I'm using. So here's my camera. It's using a 100 millimeter macro lens, which works really well for photographing both projectiles and water droplets. Then I've got three flashes in this setup. One, this one here is for the front lighting. Then I've got two in the back. They go through this diffuser to give it a nice uh, soft white background. All three of those flashes are going through this multi-flash board and then into the camera axe on uh, camera flash port number two. The camera is attached to flash port number one. Then in uh, sensor port number one, we've got a standard valve sensor. This is going to make a drop down into the reservoir. And then sort of the new addition to make this possible is this here. This is what shoots the pellet. And uh, basically, I took a valve sensor and took it apart. So that's the valve portion of the valve sensor. And I put a, on this end, I put a nozzle to connect an air compressor. So down there is just uh, the air compressor I've had. And uh, it connects into one side of the valve. And then the other side is connected to this tubing which uh, you load the pellet in right here and you push it back with the rod till you get to the depth you want. And uh, then the uh, camera axe can trigger both the shooting of a pellet and a water droplet. And when it can, tr when it can control the timing for both of those, it's possible to have a water droplet and a projectile hit each other. I've got an entire video on additives for liquid art photography, but uh, it's pretty important that you get a nice tall water droplet, so I thought I'd summarize uh, the additives you need to get those nice tall water spouts like this. Um, that doesn't happen with standard water. The two things you need to do is you need to add some kind of a gum. This is exanthin gum. Guar gum also works. Um, this will just make your water thicker. Uh, I like it a little thicker than the consistency of milk. And then also to the liquid that's going into the valve sensor, I put um, this jet dry. This is for your dishwasher. Basically, it reduces the surface tension of the water, making the water droplets uh, rebound higher. So the thickness sort of slows down the action, and then this sort of makes the liquid slipperier so it can uh, rebound higher. Um, and then just, you know, any kind of food coloring. Uh, I used red in this case. Now I wanted to talk a little bit more about the actual pellet shooting device I made. So I needed um, a little nozzle. So you get one of these with the valve sensor, but the plastic one is too big for the tubing. So I had to go to the local hardware store and buy one of these. And then I also had to buy some uh, 
tubing. I was actually looking for copper tubing, but this plastic stuff um, is what they had, and it actually works great. It's going to be way cheaper, so I'd actually recommend going with this now. Um, the inner diameter is 3 16 and that works really well for the uh, .177 caliber uh, pellets that I'm using. Um, and then I had, I, initially I sort of just laid it out as straight as I could get it, and uh, that didn't actually work. There was too much variability in firing at that point because there were some waves in it. So what I ended up doing is I had this uh, locally already, so I didn't have to buy this, but it's uh, 3 16 uh, copper, uh, I'm sorry, 3 16 brass bar. And basically you can put this through here inside this and it's a kind of a tight fit but that's that's okay and uh, basically that ensures that it's really straight and then what I do is I, I what I did was I hot glued it in place with this bar in place and then I removed the bar and I had a really straight barrel so that that worked out really well for building the pellet shooter so now we can see the actual pellet shooter here and uh, like I said this is just uh, taken from a valve sensor um, and then I have an air compressor so initially I just had the air compressor at uh, the normal pressure I run it at which is about a hundred psi and uh, the pellets were shooting around uh, 250 feet per second and that's really more than you need and in fact it makes uh, photographing them difficult uh, as you'll notice um, even in the photos I, I'm taking, there's some blur in the uh, pellets, which I actually kind of like. It indicates that the pellets are moving pretty fast. Uh, but I did decrease the pressure all the way down to 20 PSI, and that reduced the, the speed to about 75 FPS. Now I might, you know, if you really wanted good shots, you might even reduce the pressure further, maybe 10 or 5 PSI, which I could do. I just didn't uh, bother because I kind of liked the photo or the uh, the motion blur in the pellets. But uh, yeah, you can see along here that this is all just hot glued onto the board um, and that keeps the barrel nice and straight. And then I, I typically push the pellet back to this line so that it's got a nice, you know, maybe a eight inch runway um, to go out. And I found not pushing it all the way back improved the consistency, it's actually quite uh, precise now, but it did take a while of uh, playing around with things so that I could place the pellet exactly where I wanted in the scene. So here are the settings I'm using on the camera axe. Initially I used the auto calibrate to get the right settings for valve one, but then you have to turn off, you have to stop using the auto calibrate because the auto calibrate only works with one valve and you need to use the second valve as a way of firing the uh, projectile. So this is sort of after I've got everything in place and I'm just gonna quick go through the menus here and make sure all of the numbers are recorded for the people who are interested. But the important pieces are over here on this sheet and I sort of drew a diagram so that people can sort of see what's happening. So uh, this, this bar is valve one and this bar here is valve two and here is the flash. So basically um, what you can see here is there's this valve start offset and I've got that set to zero. That's sort of an offset in case you're using multiple valves. It's usually zero. Um, and then you've got uh, drop one size. I'm using a size of 65 to get a nice tall water spout and uh, that actually releases multiple drops which does cause the uh, tall spout um, and then you've got a delay, so this value uh, was arrived at with the auto calibrate for uh, water droplets and then I adjusted the D2 size a little bit after the auto calibrate to get a really nice water droplet. So I just sort of focused on getting a nice droplet first on valve one. And then once that was in place, um, which also set the, the flash delay. So the auto calibrate mode also sets this flash delay. Um, and basically the way this works, and this is sort of important to understand when you're sort of setting up uh, valve two, which you have to do manually, is this 400 milliseconds is basically after um, the uh, Oh, I have it. I, this drawing is actually wrong. This should be after 
the this should subtract out the D1 size um, because that's sort of how I wrote it but anyways so this would actually be off of here and uh, yeah sorry for the confusion there it's not not too important what's important to understand I guess is that this 400 milliseconds is going to be much longer than all of these delays and uh, that's because you because the flash has to trigger a while after all of the drops have occurred with valve one um, with this remember this valve is really just shooting a projectile and I had to manually play around with settings here to find a value that uh, put the projectile where I wanted it and uh, basically what I did was I I sort of started out at uh, around uh, I think I started at about 450 because I took the size and the delay and uh, added those together so it should have been 465 but I knew it would take some time for the projectile to get there so I started at 450 and then I started decreasing by 10 at a time until and I had a piece of paper up there so I could see if the bullet was uh, before or after um, by whether the piece of paper had a hole in it or not and uh, basically tried a bunch of values and eventually narrowed in on this 358 value which put the pellet right where I wanted that's the part that took you know some time and you have to remember when you decrease this V2 start offset you're basically shooting the bullet sooner which means it'll show up further along in the scene so you have to kind of keep keep the timing things straight I mean, there's going to be some experimentation required for anybody who wants to make this happen. I'll probably do another blog about how these valve timings work um, with a much clearer diagram because it's really important you understand how these timings work. And I'll actually uh, mention that uh, I had to change the software to make this work. Uh, before, I couldn't um, basically have this valve 2 at the correct time in relation to this flash delay that I wanted. So I'm going to update uh, the software and there'll be a link in the uh, show notes. So at this point you should understand all of the things that I've sort of set up to take these shots. Now I just sort of want to walk you through what I do to actually, you know, trigger the setup. So I'll put a pellet in here and use this little brass rod to push the pellet back to that line I talked about. And then there's a purge button on the valve sensor that I can use to uh, run some liquid through the valve to make sure that it's hitting this brass rod, which will tell me that the shot is lined up properly. Then I use the brass rod to remove any foam that occurs because of the jet dry that I put in. And then at this point, the system is good to go. Um, there's an activate button because the PSI is really low I know that these pellets um, don't travel very fast but it's basically gonna hit me here and I can definitely feel it but um, traveling at 75 feet per second it's not too bad so I'm just to save space I'm not uh, setting up a bullet stop but if you don't know the speed of your bullet like I do you definitely would want to have something to stop the bullet in a safer way uh, but because I know the velocity of it and I know that it's not going to hurt very much I'm just using my body and then I just hit the activate button on the camera axe and normally the lights would be off right now but uh, because I'm showing you I want you to be able to see what's going on I've, I've left them on and there I'm sure we got a picture of the uh, bullet piercing a water spout and uh, here are a few photos that I took during this photo shoot. Thanks for watching.